delighted to be sitting down with uh, David Stone, uh, one of the founders of Pop Club, which your cousin, I believe. Tim is actually the, the brains behind it. Yeah. He's the I brains. Can't, yeah. I can't take so what did you then? I don't know. I, I was going to say the brawn, but I don't know. No, no. It came. Out, it was Tim's concept. Uh, but you have a few other businesses, don't you? Yeah. So we have. Uh, we're in the food business, so yeah. we have brands uh, that are Pit Bros, which is a barbecue, so a casual yeah. restaurant in Dublin too. And we have a brand that's probably 12 or 13 years old now, which is Burritos and Blues. So yes. It's had its ups and its down. But and uh, you've always been with Tim, the pair of you. Yeah, myself with Tim. And yep. how did that start as cousins? How did you um, find that idea? It was actually, we had Breeders and Blues started in Dublin on Wexford Street in yeah. 2010. And Tim was in college in UCC. Yeah. And Tim used to come up and do some shifts in, in or just help me with Breeders and Blues in Wexford Street. And yeah. he just thought that it would work in Cork. So Tim spotted the unit that we have in Paul Street and yes. we opened that in 2013 okay. and that's yeah. been Tim's baby. So yeah. between myself and Tim, we've come up with all sorts of weird and wonderful yeah. ideas. That's a nice dynamic with, with oh, having great, a yeah. family member, you know. Yeah. And, I, think so. uh, I think the biggest one is trust. Yes. I, I hope Tim trusts me. Yeah. But and respect. I, I, yeah, and respect, yeah. yeah. Um, and Tim just brings a different, I think one way, Tim yeah. thinks the other. So and as you evolved Pop, Pop School from scratch, how did that, to t tell us that story, how did you work that together? His idea, he saw it. It was Tim's idea. T Tim yeah. saw it um, in the States, I think it was. Uh, he came with the idea thinking, well, h how would this work? Where would we sell it? Yeah. Then uh, we went through the whole process of does it need planning permission? Where yes. would we get a, a retail unit? Yeah. And eventually we found a retail unit. It was a bit of an opportunistic uh, scenario where the landlord was actually operating a Froyo business from this unit okay. on Castle Street, which yep. we're, we're still in. Um, he had all the equipment, everything ready, and we just brought our sort of knowledge around staffing, um, food, yeah. all that sort of good stuff. We created the brand, um, and really we just sort of kicked the, kicked the, kicked the ball around a bit yeah. until we opened it. We opened it on the coldest day in 2020, which was sometime before Christmas, yeah. in the middle of a lockdown. and. Um, it's gone from there. We, went, we, we had a really good summer this summer. July, August, September, we had huge sales to the sort of horse box, um, the, ca the, co the, the coffee shops coming yes, out of horse, yeah, that sort yeah. of culture. Um, we got 25 wholesale customers and we just thought, wow, well, maybe our model isn't actually retailing this, it's wholesaling Sailors, it to retailers yeah. Yeah. who know retail better than we do. Um, but production is where you want to you want to hold on to that. That's where I, I believe our business model is, yeah, and our brand yeah, will be yeah. for Pops. No, we tasted the product yesterday. In fact, someone sitting in that chair uh, who would be a significant baker okay. and knows his food had one. He was very impressed. Great, yeah, uh, great. Uh, and um, so the the texture was really strong, and yeah. it, it, it held together, didn't drip. You know? No, it's great. And we, in fairness, between Tim, all of us, but Daisy um, Daisy De Jesus is a. It was one of our chefs and breeders and blues, and she's really talented. Yeah. So she took on Popsicle in terms of ingredients, menu development, okay. product development. Okay. And what she has now is she's developed a range of 60 flavors, 25 wow. of which are vegan. Wow. Um, and she's really passionate about that sort yeah. of vegan space. So, so uh, when we're sitting here in a couple of years, David, where will Popsicle be, do you think? I don't know. I don't know. I think week to week. Um, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'd, li I'd like to think that we've hit a bit of a niche yeah. or a bit of a vein. Uh, in Ireland, anyway, yeah. I, if, if you can conquer Ireland, I think that's that's, yeah. that, that's where we'd love to be. Yeah. But I think that if between now and the next and, and next summer that we've yeah. increased our presence, either through our own retail presence yeah. or through partners that we have, maybe yeah. most of most of the republic covered, that'd be great. So, in my experience, I've learned having an idea for a business is is the easy part. Yep. It's it's seeing it through and the discipline to see it through. How do you work that model, the pair of you, to, to be focused and not just jump to another idea? You know, it's very hard. And mm. the one thing, my, my, in, what experience has brought to myself and Tim is that over the last ten years of working together, is that we do bounce a lot between ideas. And we, yeah. someone told us that we're really, we we had a mentor one time, and they told us that you guys are, are really good at scope creep. Yeah. So you get your you get your project, <laughs> and you're over here. So we work really hard on that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think what we. have between our food brands now, which is Breeders and Blues, Pit yeah. Bros, Popsicle, yeah. that that's our focus for the next five years. And we're fairly well determined now to, to focus on each of those categories as an underlying okay. food business. So you want to build momentum and scale in your food business yeah. and try and resist the temptation to start Absolutely. something else, you know? Yeah. We, had yeah. a, we had a, it was a lovely tangent at the time, but because we were in the food space and we were employing a lot of part-time yeah. staff, one business that we created was like an Uber for hospitality staff. Yes. We called it Go Worky. Yeah. So myself and Tim 
I don't know if it was for good or for bad, but we lost three years of our food business developing that, yes. which we ultimately sold to a, a company in the UK, which had a great ending, and it sounds great, yeah. but we lost focus on our yeah, core okay. business, which was food. So that experience has taught us a huge but are you? You're obviously self-financed. Yeah. At the start, we weren't. We had families and friends. And yes. We yeah. were very lucky that yeah. uh, we had parents that, that, that were were fortunate to be able to support yes. us. Now, it was, we never started with... But you don't have shareholders to report to. No. So no. that gives you that yeah. flexibility, and yeah. that sometimes is the difference. A lot of people Absolutely. have... But it, it's something back. that we're actually we're, 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 we're speaking about now openly yeah. is that how do we, how do we scale? Yeah. Um, and is the right time now to bring on shareholders? Now, yeah. that's, a, that's a question we haven't answered Big yet. Question, but, yeah. um, it's, Let's it's come back and talk a bit about brand and, and how important do you feel that is now in the food business in terms of getting your message out there? I think, it's very, I, I think it's very important. One thing that we've always been really focused on, this comes from sort of my dad, is that brands, brands have the value. You know, we can be really good manufacturers. Like yeah. that, that has an element and, and a speciality yeah. and, a, and, a, and a uniqueness to it. But unless you have that brand value to the end customer, yeah. um, you really, it's not that you don't, ha you, need that, you, need that, you need the brand to be the front face of your business. Yes. Um, and that's something that we, we, we to and fro from with, with Popsicle is where do we bring that? Because we do have the capability now to own brand, a gourmet artisan Popsicle. Yeah. But we really want to focus on. But do you, have you got an instinct for brand yourself? An, an, in, an instinct. Instinct for brand. Yeah. I'd like to think so. Yeah. Okay. Very good. I, I think I know what what looks well. Yes. What communicates well to an audience. And what will make a, an emotional connection. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and for me, I could be overly focused on fonts, for example, okay. or iconography, or we would call, we would call that anal. But you're fine. Anal, yeah. I was going to say anal. But I didn't know if I could. Um, but but that, that sort of stuff to me. I'd always look at that first rather than how we're actually going to produce it, for example. Okay. Um, and where did you get this eye from? I don't know. I don't know. I, I went to college. I did marketing and management in DIT. Yeah, okay. It was, it was actually a really nice balanced course yeah. because it had a lot of the business side, yeah. but it had the marketing element. I, I, I don't know where I got it from. I just yeah. like... I, I just like... I like fonts. I like colors. Presentations, I like, yeah, very yeah. important, yeah. But yeah. Like, I think it's about trying to make... Like, the, the product I tasted yesterday, I was so impressed with. Yeah. Um, but I look at the brand, and I, to me, it hasn't quite delivered on the quality Agreed. that the product has. Great. And the ingredients must be. I mean, you must not take any shortcuts on ingredients. No. So that doesn't come across. No. You know, in your communication messaging. And uh, Irishmen love ice cream. Yeah. And but you've definitely got a vein. I, mean, I, I tell you, that was like homemade. I was so impressed. Yeah. And genuinely, uh, and this isn't. Usually you get the sort of odd bullshit from a brand, but mm. that is like we we hand make that make those mixes from scratch and yeah. they're put into a, a production machine that that, that essentially yeah. freezes them. Yeah. But I do agree with you. That's one thing that when we we started that brand December 2020, yeah. so it's really really young. But we're in terms of sort of the characteristics and the underlying messaging in that brand, we're yeah. way short of. And we've actually learned that lesson the hard way to our retail to our okay. retail stores because we've definitely there's time to fix it, but I, yeah. I, we've sort of come up slightly short. So that is part of the next evolution between now and maybe yeah, January next year. Growing pains, yeah. growing pains. You mentioned you know. accountants and your father being an accountant earlier, and my accountant gave me advice when I was a young man. He said, look, always go out and get in harm's way. Yeah. If you're not getting in harm's way, you're not doing business, mate. Yeah, for sure. And, and it, I'm worried about the consequences afterwards. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and I it think takes a certain mindset for that. It does. Yeah. Um, and I know in our... In my experience, we've gone through the ups and the downs and yeah. the middles, and it really is now. We sort of went like that: go and make mistakes, yeah. be really aggressive. Yeah. Then we realised how lucky we were to have what we had, yeah. and the sales and customers and loyalty that we had. Yeah. And now you sort of think, well, it takes so little to, to screw that up. Yeah. So maybe reduce your risk a bit. Yeah. But we're sort of next year we sort of set our minds of let's go out and start making mistakes again. Yeah. Very Shout good. about it and see where we go. You're still relatively young in your, your career. And, Feel and, older. And uh, you've achieved a lot. But what advice would you give to a, you know, a young startup? Uh, maybe not necessarily in food, but maybe in food. You know, what are sort of three things you'd really think they should focus on early, early doors um, that they might not think of, you know? Yeah, I, I think what you, I can't remember the exact phrase you used there, but sort of get out there and... and, and get in harm's way. Yeah, get in yeah. harm's way. Make yeah. your, put yourself in front of people. Yeah. There's no right answer to, to anything. If someone asks you a question, yeah. I would say, in my experience, we've never we never 
we never lied. We've never told a fib. If, yeah. if, if, if someone asks us a direct, direct question, we give them yeah. a direct answer. Yeah. From experience, I, I, I'd always try and make sure that you have your numbers right. So albeit you want to be out there in front of people making yeah. mistakes and, and getting yeah. out there, just make sure you have your numbers right. Yeah. So there's no point in trying to think you can sell something for two euro when it's yeah. going to cost you two euro and five cents. Yeah. You know? um, so make sure you have your... Very good. My dad has a saying, what's measured gets done. Yeah, yeah. So as long as yeah. you're looking backwards on, on how you're yeah. doing, that's it. And I get a sense you're having a bit of fun. You're I, enjoying I, I this. Well, I just love variety. I know yeah. I mentioned earlier on that we want to stop hopping around. Yeah. I, I, love, I love that we're able to have three different brands that have three different messages, that have yes. three different offerings, yeah. but essentially our food businesses. Yeah. You know? And we have to deliver the quality. The guys in the kitchen need to, do, to, to deliver yes. really, good, um, really yeah. good quality produce and our front of house have to deliver yeah. really good experiences. And no matter what brand you're selling, if it's chocolate, if it's whatever, you need to be delivering that. Very good. I'm David, very really nice to down and yeah, talk you with you. And really enjoyed that. And we should follow your uh, progression with real interest. Yep. And it's great to see two cousins come together uh, entrepreneurially and just take on the food business in yep. their own way. Thanks, man. Really enjoyable. Cheers.